Good morning. Welcome, Minister. Hi, Barry. How are you? Very good. Minister, you described um, gay marriages as a great change whose time has come. Do we now have a Prime Minister, therefore, who is behind the times? No, I don't think so. I think the Prime Minister said in the lead-up to this conference that what she wanted to see was a conscience vote in the Parliament, and she's been successful in delivering on that conscience vote. This is a huge step forward from where we were at the last ALP National Conference, where um, even the idea of civil unions or a conscience vote on civil unions seemed beyond our reach. So I'm very happy with the outcome of yesterday's uh, conference decision and I'm very much looking forward to seeing this debate in the Parliament and I'm very much looking forward to seeing Tony Abbott give his MPs a conscience vote as well. I think there are a lot of people in the Liberal Party who also believe in marriage equality. We heard Russell Broadbent just last week on the 7.30 saying that he'd be prepared to cross the floor. There are obviously others who feel strongly about this for personal reasons or for electoral reasons and I'd like to see them given the same opportunity that Labor MPs will have to exercise their conscience on this important issue. Do you think the Prime Minister is open to persuasion on the core issue or will she vote against the party platform? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to talk to the Prime Minister about this but all I can say is that when the Prime Minister said she wanted to increase party membership, to have a vibrant and growing Labor Party. What she did by encouraging a conscience vote and this debate yesterday is the best contribution we've seen to that vibrant party culture in some time. Labor Party branch members have been campaigning for this change. Uh, Labor Party branch members have seen the change to the party platform and they'll see Stephen Jones able to bring a private members bill to the parliament. They're the sort of victories that um, Labor Party branch members join the Labor Party for, to see that sort of social change driven by a Labor government. And because you did describe it as the one last piece of discrimination, you do see this as it is about discrimination. Look, I understand that for most people, having a job, their kids' education, the state of the healthcare system, all of these things are the most important things in their lives. But I think whenever we have a choice between continuing discrimination and greater equality, we must always choose greater equality. And it, I always found it very difficult that um, in every area we had changed laws to make sure that gay men and lesbians and same-sex couples were not discriminated against, but this one remaining piece of legislation very clearly discriminated against people simply on the basis of their sexuality. And, uh, and I, I think that this will be a, a very important um, wrapping up of the historic changes that Labor has made to remove all discrimination against gay men and lesbians and same-sex couples. And on the issue of offshore processing of asylum seekers, what, what did you think was the prevailing mood that came through yesterday? Well, I think there's very strong support uh, right across the party for a compassionate approach um, to dealing with asylum seekers. People see that compassionate approach in slightly um, different ways. And the issue of offshore processing is obviously the area of greatest difference. But um, the reason that the, the Immigration Minister is keen to do this is not because he's a, a cruel person who wants to punish people. He is genuinely worried about people making a very dangerous journey across the seas. And I think um, a, being able to have that debate again on the conference floor and seeing uh, that people's views are a lot more subtle and complex than we generally read about uh, in, the, in the newspapers or that we're able to explain in the five se second grab in the evening news. I, I think that that should be very reassuring for the Australian public to see um, the, the, the thoughtfulness and um, the, uh, the goodwill that was there in this debate and others yesterday. And on party reform, uh, there are moves now to, uh, to at least look at some direct election of conference delegates, some rank and file input into, into policy making. Does, does it go far enough? Oh, I think it's, it's going to be terrific. By the, this time, uh, the next conference cycle, we will have directly elected delegates to our national party conference. I think that's an important and historic change. Um, I think some of the other changes that have been talked about as well um, will be very important. But I think the direct election to party conference is something that um, really uh, boosts up uh, Labor Party members 
um, belief that they can campaign, get themselves elected, come to conference, speak, change party platform uh, and really drive the sort of um, issues that they care passionately about. The speeches over the last few days have really been fantastic. We've seen great conversation within the Labor Party about how best to deliver prosperity, jobs, uh, good quality jobs, uh, how to further improve our education and healthcare systems. All of these things that are the bread and butter issues that um, people are concerned about in their day to day lives. We have party members here who represent the broad Australian community and having those people directly elected next time around I think uh, adds an even greater level of democracy to our party and uh, an even stronger, has an even stronger um, representation of the Australian community here within the conference. Well, you're not done yet. Uh, today, uranium sales to India. Now, there's an interesting group of uh, ministers lining up against this. Uh, Stephen Conroy, Peter Garrett, Anthony Albanese. Um, what will you be saying? Well, I, I don't support selling uranium to India. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm a little bit old-fashioned on this. I think that it's always a good idea to know what you're going to do with the waste product um, before you dig the stuff out of the ground. And uh, I'm, uh, I, I would certainly be arguing against um, further uranium sales to India. Um, We'll just have to see what happens. This, I think it'll be late this morning that we'll have the debate on the, this The chances issue. are, though, you'll be on the losing side of the argument? Well, I'm not going to speculate about who might win or lose. We've got a, a terrific uh, debate coming up. It's a Democratic Party. We'll see how the numbers fall. And what's the view there? Do delegates see this is very different to the, uh, the sanitised 2009 conference? Oh, absolutely. I, I really think that having the conference... Um, uh, go through all of these issues that have been um, bubbling away within the Labor Party and within the Australian community uh, has been terrific. I think it shows what a strong, vibrant, um, thoughtful party culture we have. Um, it also shows, frankly, that if you want to influence what Labor governments do, you should join the Labor Party. And uh, the victory that, um, that branch members had yesterday on the issue of marriage equality is just one example where campaigning within the Labor Party has made all the difference to what will happen uh, in public. Tanya Plibersek, thanks for your time this morning. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure.